Hello my friends, the wild boar, also known as the wild hog, is a wild animal that's not native to the United States. In the 1500s, Spanish explorers brought dozens of domestic pigs to the United States for food. Over time, some domestic pigs escaped and they reproduced in the wild and from there, the first wild boar populations were established in the United States. Until the 1900s, the Russian wild boar was brought to the lands of the United States for the sole purpose of sport hunting. The combination of Russian wild boars and runaway domestic pigs created today's wild boar population in the United States. According to a USDA report, by the end of 2022, an estimated 8.9 million wild boars are living in the country. With the ability to reproduce extremely quickly, along with the ability to adapt well to all environmental conditions, this invasive animal has been present in all 35 states of the United States and its negative effects that they can cause can make the governments and farmers of the United States have very big headaches in trying to find solutions. To better understand the damage and benefits that millions of wild boars bring to the United States, in this video we will explore everything about this invasive creature. Female wild boars usually start breeding when they reach six months old. Even with an abundant food source, calving can take place as soon as the female wild boars are four months old. In the United States, each female wild boar usually gives birth to two litters per year, and each litter usually produces seven to 13 young. After mating, the boars will walk away and do not participate in raising the young. On average, a male wild boar will father 90 to 130 young each year. The wild boar's natural predators in the United States include coyotes, lynx and mountain lions. However, the number of wild boars killed by predators accounts for an extremely small percentage. In addition, most predators only hunt young wild boar. So this has not affected the number of wild boar in the United States. In Europe and Asia, predation by wild predators can account for up to 25% of the annual mortality of the wild boar population. However, in the United States, humans are the most significant predators for this invasive species. For many years now, Texas has always been the state with the largest number of wild boar in the country. An estimated 3.5 to 4 million wild boars live in the state. According to a report by the Texas Farm Bureau, in recent years, the state's crop production has always lost to wild boar around 17%. Some farmers claim that wild boars can sniff out crops as soon as the harvest season is about to begin. Herds of wild boar around farms are regularly hunted and trapped. However, many Texas farmers claim that more wild boars are returning to their fields each month. It is estimated that each year the corn industry in the United States loses about $1.7 billion because of wild boars. Wild boars will destroy nearly everything in their path. In particular, 
it would be very dangerous if adult wild boars approached children. They don't only affect commercial crops. Millions of wild boar in the United States also destroy native plant communities and threaten the food source of Native American wildlife such as deer and turkeys. In addition, wild boars can also be significant predators of eggs and young hatchlings of ground nesting birds and can even eat the young of some mammals that are small. On agricultural real estate forums in the United States, many real estate brokers have said the first question that customers ask them is whether the land for sale has many wild boars. Wild boar hunting is a popular recreational activity in the United States, especially in areas where the animal is considered invasive and causes significant agricultural damage. In most states in the United States, licensees can hunt wild boar in unlimited numbers and at any time of the year. According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, the economic impact of hunting in the United States is estimated at $38.3 billion annually, of which the wild boar hunting industry impacts $27 billion to the country's economy. According to a USDA report in 2019, about 29% of wild boar populations were harvested through hunting and trapping. In Texas alone, an estimated 830,000 boars are harvested each year through hunting and trapping. Although wild boar is very common in states like Texas, California, or Mississippi, trapping a few wild boars is not easy for most people. You can see boar trap videos very easily on YouTube, but if you are not an experienced person in this field, you can completely come home empty-handed after setting traps all day. Wild boars are intelligent animals and can quickly learn to avoid traps and other methods of hunting. In addition, they are also noisy animals that can easily alarm other wild boars in the area when they sense danger. According to statistics, there have been more than 113 recorded attacks by feral pigs on humans in the United States between 1825 and 2019. Of these attacks, five were fatal. Three out of five deadly attacks are caused by wild boars being injured by hunters. On November 26, 2019, a 59-year-old Texas woman named Christine Rollins was attacked and killed by a herd of feral pigs just steps from their front door of her workplace in Anahuac, Texas. In this video, we've rounded up everything about wild boar in the United States. Of course, there's a lot of interesting information regarding invasive species that we don't know yet. If you have something interesting about wild boar, please let us know in the comment section of this video. Hello my friends. Cold rain and snowfall are one of the most extreme weather patterns for any farm animal. If you do not have experience in taking care of animals in this type of weather, it is very easy for dozens or even hundreds of animals to die of cold in livestock farms. With more than 700,000 active animal farms across the country, it is inevitable that millions of farm animals in the United States must face the harsh winter weather. And in today's video, we're going to livestock farms to see how ranchers raise thousands of livestock through the harsh winter.
we are currently on a cattle ranch in eastern Colorado that is home to about 170 cattle and calves. At this farm, even two week old calves are herded into the pasture when the outdoor temperature is only about 17 degrees Fahrenheit. In cold weather like this, the amount of feed for the cattle and calves at this farm will need to increase by about 40% to make them strong enough to withstand the harsh weather. For farms that don't have a lot of land to graze, silage is almost the best choice to help the herd get through the winter when the ambient temperature drops below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. An adult cow on this farm needs to eat about 90 pounds of silage instead of the usual 55 pounds. This is a cattle ranch in Custer County, Nebraska, home to about 380 cattle and calves. At about 9am each day, hundreds of cattle here will be herded to the cornfields next to the farm to feed, and the outdoor temperature is now about 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Cattle that are in poor health and have thin coats often feel stressed when a field temperature drops below 15 degrees Fahrenheit. When subjected to cold stress, cattle often change behavior, such as seeking shelter to avoid cold. With good body condition, dry coat, fresh water and good nutrition, the cattle here can completely withstand temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit very well. According to USDA statistics, in 2022, Nebraska is the second state in the list of states with the most cattle in the country, with about 6.8 million heads accounting for about 7.4% of the total number of cattle in the United States. In winter, a thick layer of snow covers the entire pasture area of this farm, and the food used for the hundreds of cattle here is hay and straw. The quality of meat from cattle raised under these cold conditions is always appreciated and costs about 20% more than cattle living in warm climates. This is a herd of about 35 cattle in Fergus County, Montana. Due to being raised in small numbers and without a barn system, all cattle here are grazed on pasture for 12 months of the year. During the snowy season, hay and straw will also be used to feed dozens of livestock. These cattle are only protected by a simple fence system and have no roof at all. In recent years, the number of cattle in Montana has always remained between 2.5 and 2.7 million heads. This is also the third state in the list of states with the largest cattle per capita in the United States, with about three cattle per person in the state. The cold winter with snowfall causes many difficulties for livestock farms. However, for experienced cattle ranchers in the United States, overcoming these extreme weather conditions is quite easy. We are currently at a goat farm in Riverside County, Southern California. In winter, the amount of natural grass around this farm only meets about 10% of the amount of food that the goats here need to consume. In order to meet the food requirements of nearly 100 goats, the owner of this farm will cut down branches to make food for the goats. Of course, these goats are also supplemented with other foods such as grain when they return to the barn.
Just like cattle, goats can perfectly adapt to temperatures between 15 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit, provided their food intake is increased by about 30% compared to their normal diet. In addition, keeping the coat dry is very important for the goats to withstand the cold of winter. Goodbye Livestock Farms, we will go to an apple farm in Yakima Valley in Washington State to see how the process of harvesting thousands of tons of apples here takes place during the snowy season. November to December is the time when it snows heavily and covers the apple farms of Yakima. This causes great damage to apple growers and apple harvest workers. The process of picking billions of apples is done when the snow melts and by then about 35% of the apples are spoiled. Most of the apples on this farm after picking will be sent to apple cider or apple cider vinegar factories because their quality is not qualified for sale at farmers markets or supermarkets. In addition to apples, the harvest of corn or soybeans during the snowy season is also common in states with large farming areas such as Iowa or California. Farm experts say that both corn and soybean crops can be harvested under freezing temperatures and even snowfall. However, this type of weather can easily reduce quality and yield. 